welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind, the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello and welcome to another Coral Blade Grotto reaction video. In this one, I'm going to be reacting to someone who calls themselves the wolf and he's actually reviewing a book. So I'm going to be reacting to the book as well. The book is called uh, Par A Guide to Parsing Syntax Grammar or something like that. But you'll see what I'm talking about. And again, this is a video reaction of opinion. And I am not uh, commenting or making any type of critique of anyone's personality. What I'm doing is I'm looking at this through the lens of quantum grammar, through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax grammar, in that I'm looking for knowledge of grammar because that's what they're basically trying to convey in the book and the guys uh, reviewing the book. Because uh, in order to review something, you have to have knowledge of the topic itself, really. Or maybe you're learning the topic. And we have to see if the book itself contains knowledge of correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax grammar. So that's what I'm doing. Not looking at personalities or anything like that. Just looking at or looking for grammar knowledge. Enjoy. All right. Before we begin, I just want to say I have not watched this video. And uh, just going on the title alone. I don't know who this individual is. And... Just wanted to let that uh, be clear. So here we go. I'm, I'm watching this as not only a YouTube content creator, but as a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar tutor based upon the title. Um, I'm going to be looking for evidence of correct sentence structure knowledge. Okay. Now, right away, I'm looking at the title. It says learn the game of quantum syntax grammar. So when someone calls it quantum syntax grammar, that, that is not the correct name for it. So to me, that's a red flag already that the individual probably doesn't really know what it is they're talking about. Now, I'm not going to make a judgment right now because uh, I haven't watched the video. But just based on that name alone and also calling it a game because it's, it's not a game. It's a technology, and it's a book review in this title, so I guess what they're going to be doing is reviewing a book. So I'm going to be looking for that as well. A book having to do with quantum syntax grammar. So here we go. No, no, but that was really the first time I ever... Uh... Hey, what's up, YouTube? <laughs> okay, so that's an interesting way to come into a video from a content creator acting like they didn't know they were being recorded when it's probably just him and his own phone which he pressed record on and he's acting like he's talking to someone because I don't see anyone else in the room which there may be someone in the room but uh, I doubt it that that was pretty funny friends and family it's a boy the bad wolf all right 
So, um, <laughs> it's just being silly today, guys. No kidding. Um, first of all, let's start off with um, thank you guys for helping me to reach 8,260 people. Uh, I see your names pop up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's just a. That's impressive. You know, much, much respect for him and whatever he's doing. He's getting viewers. That's more subscribers than I have for sure. So, kudos to him. Amazing that there's that many of you guys that are on this. And I mean, the numbers have been exploding. Like, um, I'm, I'm totally humbled. Um, it, I never even expected that. And especially because of the fact that like this information is very rarely known these days. That statement is, is true. Okay. It's very rarely known. But it's not because the information isn't out there. The information is out there. And I just want to make that clear that some people think that this stuff is hidden or censored, but it's not. I mean, as I you know, said before, he has way more subscribers than me. I have uh, almost 5,000. I'm right on the edge of 5,000 subscribers, okay? I have over 300 videos on my YouTube channel, um, on my grammar channel. And I have never once had any problems from YouTube uploading any correct sentence structure video. The only time I've had a problem is when I've uploaded fiction opinion videos on this channel, Coral Blade Grotto, but never with the grammar. So I just wanted to make that clear that while it is not well known, it's not because it's not readily available. Remember, we are non-combatants, non-belligerents, non-persons, non-individuals, and this is for U.S. national state citizens, American nationals, nationals of the United States of America, the Republic, under the Geographical Constitution. So, what he's establishing in my psyche right away is that he is navigating using a fiction condition of state of the mind. All those titles he just mentioned are all fiction. It's all part of the fiction. Has nothing to do with correct sentence structure itself. I mean, you, you can translate or transpose those ideas using correct sentence structure if you choose to, but those things themselves are not necessary with correct sentence structure at all. He's participating with titles created by the fiction to be used in the fiction, if that makes sense. And they may or may not have to do with uh, common law or those UCC code type things and people. Those are all fiction, though. It's all fiction. Again, you can use that in conjunction with correct sentence structure, translate or transpose it, transship it over to your correct sentence structure construct. But in and of themselves, they have nothing to do with, with quantum grammar at all and are not necessary. All right. All the rest of you U.S. citizens who are wholeheartedly, we love you. <laughs> Stage that away. Okay. That being said, let's get into it. Well, thank you guys for the donations and the support on Black Slide 32 and the Bad Wolf Media Channel, the personal channel of your boy, uh, the wolf. Okay. Now, let's get into it. Um, this particular video is going to be about Bail, the game of... Uh, wow. The page is a court on which to play. Adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. I wonder if he's the author. Some of you viewers may know that he is or he isn't. I, I don't know at this point. Looks like James Cloud is the author's name. Quantum Syntax Grammar. And this is by James Merle Cloud. Now, I know Russell J. Gaul and David, I think, Wynn Meyer also have their... Are you serious right now? I don't even need to react to that part, okay? 
I can't, I don't know. This, this, based upon the beginning of the video and the way he acted like he didn't know the camera was on, I get a very strong feeling and strong intuition that he's acting here as well, that he doesn't know who those individuals are and he doesn't know how to pronounce their names, okay? So obviously he is not the author of this book. So I'm getting a sense already without having seen or heard anything about quantum grammar from him. I'm getting a sense of his uh, level of knowledge. Information out there. I reached out to Russell, but I haven't heard anything back. So, okay. Um, anyway, so in reading this particular book, okay, um, what is quantum syntax grammar? Now, remember, when they created the English language, everything has rules. Just because you guys only went and studied, you know, the basics of it, how to, you know, conjugate a sentence and put things together and whatever else, doesn't mean that there weren't so finer nuances of this. I don't even know if they teach this anymore, but this is the base code. This is the DNA of the English language. Now, when the... What is the base code? Is he saying... What, what is he saying? Is he saying that quantum grammar is the base code? Because if that's what he's saying, I would have to say that I I wouldn't know how to begin to certify that because I have no, I've, this is the first time I've heard that. The system uh, adopted English as being the official language. That means they had to abide by the official rules and codes of it. So, shh, this is off the record. If something that they put together, such as hypothetically, a ticket, a summons, a court case, uh, whatever it is, if they are not following the rules, it is null and void. So right now what he's saying is, is does, does not make logical sense to me grammatically as far as this technology goes and it's giving further evidence to me that this fellow uh, doesn't quite know what correct sentence structure is. Now that doesn't exactly mean that your case and whatever else is just going to match and go away. But it still does give you the grounds that you can um, challenge them on the validity of it. Say, you, you, how are you going to serve me with something and your ticket's not in the proper structure or your uh, summons or your whatever? Now there are... Okay, I see what he's doing here. He definitely doesn't know what correct sentence structure is. And I'm just going to uh, share with you what I'm talking about. What he just said there. He's talking about confronting someone, perhaps a, a police officer or whatever, who writes a ticket to someone and saying, how are you going to give me this ticket when it's not even in correct grammar? Viewers, I challenge you to do that to any police officer or anyone. I challenge you to do that and see what happens. See how how far it gets you. That is not, uh, with my experience and, and humble first-hand knowledge, that is not the way to go. Okay. You, it's it's never good to start off a geometric level playing field by telling someone how stupid they are because they're not using correct grammar. Seriously, no, 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 no. I highly counsel against that type of approach. The type of approach I'm talking about is where you commandeer the ticket, whatever it is. First of all, you have to you have to discover the and, and, and um, you basically have to give evidence to the volition. Okay, so if it's a ticket for speeding, were you speeding? If you were speeding, then it's your fault and you have to make that right. If you were given a ticket for, I don't know, not wearing a seatbelt, okay, that's different. All right, that is not a public safety hazard for anyone other than yourself. And if you are a master and authority of yourself, then that is a case where you could do use correct sentence structure to make that trespass go away because it is a trespass. And the way that would work is that you would commandeer the vessel, 
tow it as a salvage. Because there's no closure to the grammar on it, you would give closure by banking syntax values. Uh, you can see behind me here, syntax values, and show the modification in the grammar, and at the same time, offer to teach the author what you're talking about, the author of the ticket, right? Whoever wrote the ticket. Whoever's giving you the ticket probably didn't write the ticket. The ticket was probably already written, so therefore they are not the author of the ticket, so therefore perhaps they're not even an authority of the ticket, because that's what authority means. You're an author of something. You have that knowledge. So that's how I would handle it. Like I said in that other video having to do with uh, the, the Mitchell Smith fellow, uh, if it were a situation like that where I was pulled over for a taillight or, or being out in my car or a license plate being uh, hit, uh, blocked or, or whatever on the car, I definitely wouldn't argue with a police officer and if you know by speaking with him if he decided to give me a ticket I certainly wouldn't argue the ticket on the spot I would just take the ticket go home syntax it and within 72 hours send it back and pff, done because they're not going to be able to come back at me because with anything because number one they don't know correct sentence structure number two um, they're probably just not going to want to bother with it. And if they do come back with something, I would just do the same thing and send it out within 72 hours, and it would just eventually go away. That's my experience. That's how these things work. Hope that helps. There are other things that are associated you can challenge, but that's in other videos. Um, and I'm still learning some things, but uh, anyway. So... What can we tell you about this? Okay, so I'm trying to see if I have any main things highlighted. Okay, so some of the, a few of the rules of engagement as listed here. Um, what keeps us here and now on the court of a contract? Um, okay, so example, present tense only. In order for their things to be valid, they have to always and only speak in the present tense. So no use of words showing past or future tense, that those would be considered out of bounds, that invalidated that statement, okay, that ticket or whatever else. Um, positive only sentences or information, no negativity in the form of words with a prefix that renders them to be negative, okay? So no negative structuring. The next one, structures of the page should have no open spaces okay so as i've done here between sentences this breaks up continuity of evidence so you know how they tell you put a space between your your sentences nope 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 that's actually um in error that's out of bounds okay okay what he's saying there is not correct either in a correct sentence structure claim the spacing must be consistent or if it's not consistent because of justification or what have you closure must be given in the document itself in the dictionary in the styles manual of that document as to why the spacing is the way it is normally for the ease of of conveyance for the ease of the readers uh, cognition of the document I will put, you know, I will single space in between the sentences, the lines, I mean, and then sometimes I will double space between each claim, which is fine because each claim is its own claim, you see, and it's easier for the reader to just see that rather than just see a whole wall of correct sentence structure. But we give closure to this in the document that that's what we're doing so that it has an explanation there is closure that the, the key the correct sentence structure is closure okay closure closure to everything that is on your document everything that is in your court you must have closure and authority over and have knowledge of it and be able to explain it at any given moment that is the key Okay, 
So when he's talking about these things like this, it's not, I mean, those are terms and conditions that you can place in your document, but it's your document, so you can do it however you want to do it. You can left justify it. You can left and right justify it. You can center it if you want to, but you have to give closure that you're doing that. Otherwise, you're going to have these big breaks in the continuance of the evidence, the excessive spacing. So, again, the key to a correct sentence structured document, other than the grammar, is to give closure to everything on the document, the spacing, uh, the style, everything, and have that included in the document or give access to a venue with which the reader or other contract parties can access the closure on the document. Okay. Also, another example, no boxes. Boxes removes from removes whatever content is in it from the page of what it, so whatever's inside of it is removed. This breaks up um, continuance of evidence. So if they box something, which a lot of them do, I mean, even if the whole thing has a box around it, that means everything in there is null and void. It's not there. Okay, which is why we told you guys about the four corners rule um, of not having boxes or boxing the bracket, or putting brackets or a box around your zip code and whatever else. Legally, that means it's not on the paper. They can never use those things against you. And even if they try to, um, sorry, not according to quantum syntax grammar. I must caution the reader, uh, the viewer. What he just did there, he held that book up and if, if you were to do that, if, if you were to get a ticket or whatever, let's say, and there's a box around, you know, the ticket or boxes inside the, the, the document, which there probably will be, and you're sitting there and you get the ticket and you and you hold up the book and say, according to this, this is, you know, wrong, that's not going to work out for you. All right, so what else have we got here? Uh, no underlining. How many times have you seen something that was underlined? And remember, you sign on a line. So technically, your name is underlined. Okay, this is a common one that the common law people harp on and on against. And by the way, it's not sign on the line. It's sign on the dotted line, remember? But that has nothing to do with anything. Again. In a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar document, if you authorize things like underlines or certain style of spacing, then that particular mechanic is valid and correct for your document. And anyone who wants to contract with you must agree with those terms and conditions. Like I learned from Colin David Ivanwinkle and Miller, whom I was blessed to be in contact with in the last year of his life, he said, he advised me, he said, if your platform allows it, underline your compound facts. Or, for example, your name, your punctuated name, from, for me it's Jason, well, colon Jason, hyphen Matthew, colon space glass. He said, underline that entire thing and give closure in your dictionary or your styles manual that anything that's underlined is to be taken as a whole. So if you say, for the Jason, hyphen Matthew, colon glass, and I underline the name, that's to be taken as a fact, a seven going by the, the syntax values of seven. So without breaking the correct sequencing of positionals, you could say for the Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass of the knowledge is, you see what I did there? If I don't underline the name Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass, now that colon before the glass becomes a part of the sequencing of positionals and then it would necessarily have to be read for the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass is with the knowledge by the conveyance period and then backwards it would be you know for the conveyance of the knowledge is with the glass by the Jason hyphen Matthew period but if you underline the Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass 
Now that's to be taken as a whole. And then you can continue on with your concern, your verb, your possessive, your concern, possessive authority, so on and so forth. But I mean, this fellow quite clearly does not have a grasp of, you know, not even a rudimentary grasp of the grammar. So I just want to point that out. If you want more closure on underlining and how I use it in my construct, a correct sentence structure construct, you can check out multiple videos on my YouTube channel. Um, so what he's saying here, again, is fiction. It's giving jurisdiction to the fiction. He's using fiction against fiction. Please keep that in mind. Okay. Underlining erases words from the page. This is not here. All right. Not correct. So... Again, if you're participating with the fiction and the jurisdiction of your contract, your adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun contract dictates that anything that's underlined is not on the page, well then of course it's not on the page if you're giving jurisdiction to the fiction. Hope that makes sense. Potential grammar fraud, you can tell them. This note has various errors and it has been rendered no contract and potential grammar fraud. Okay. Um, Here is something also I would advise. This is unsolicited. It's not potential grammar fraud. If there is a malicious trespass happening and adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble is used, it is grammar fraud. Now, the more, a, a, a more gentle way to put it would be to say a fictitious conveyance of grammar. So there are levels to this. If you're stopping the trespass of perhaps a nascent trespasser, you might use the term fictitious conveyance of grammar. If it is a malicious trespasser, you might go a little bit harder and call it grammar fraud. You, again, you have to be conscious and considerate of who it is you're communicating with. Like, for instance, the word disarm, okay, dis, that negates it. So what, to disarm means to not have an arm? Can't have it on there. Not in the proper, not with proper syntax grammar. You can't have arm either because it's a vowel in front of a consonant. So disarm means a, it's a no-no. Oppose. We oppose your information. Nope. The OP. That's a negative. Can't do it. All right. Rules of engagement. Contracts that are not completely understood by all parties are fraudulent. So if you didn't understand the entire uh, contract, word for word, letter for letter, um, statement for statement, and it's not and it's not done in the proper syntax, it is not contractual. It is void. Um, a statement not refuted or rebutted is considered to stand as fact. That's why I want to tell you guys they have to get back to you when you mail these things out line for line, thing for thing, and it has to be proven just. Like, here's the information to go against what you sent us. If they don't do that or they ignore it, smells, Wargo. Um, then it is considered to be null and void. They have voided the contract. Whether they know it or not does not matter. Ignorance of... Rules of engagement. Contracts that... All right. Rules of engagement. Contracts that are not completely understood by all parties are fraudulent. So if you... This is correct. Wholeheartedly agree with that. That is, in any case, whether it's a correct sentence structure contract or an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun contract. Now, 
Keep this in mind. This is where the honor and grace comes in, the balance of the honor and grace. Any contract that is not understood, cognized, comprehended by all contract parties is null and void. Keep in mind, this also goes for correct sentence structure. So one can't really just go around throwing out correct sentence structure documents at people who don't understand them. You're not going to be contracting with them because they don't understand it. That's why I always say, in order to use this, you must cognize it, understand it to the level that you can teach someone else, that you can educate them on the spot so that you can contract with them. And you can certify by looking in their eyes and their mannerisms that they do have closure on what it is you're saying. So what he's saying is correct, but it goes both ways. It goes both ways. If the other contract party doesn't understand correct sentence structure, you have to teach them if they're going to contract with you. If not, there's no contract. You're speaking babble to one another then. So it works both ways with the fiction as well. You know, if you don't understand the fiction because of the modification, um, same thing. There's no contract there. The difference is in the volition, which I've said again and again is the most important thing in any document or contract or whatever, is the volition. Is it your volition to be understood, to um, share closure and be honorable and above board? Or is it your volition to be misunderstood? Is it your volition to basically lord your education level over someone else that doesn't understand you? Why do you think when you walk into a courtroom, they want you to have a liar, uh, I'm sorry, I mean a lawyer representing you because you're basically saying you're too stupid to walk in there. You have to have someone who has knowledge to have authority over you because you don't know what they're talking about in that room. All right, here we go. Who didn't understand the entire uh, contract, word for word, letter for letter, um, statement for statement, and it's not and it's not done in the proper syntax? It is not contractual. It is void. I'll just say right now, I have a gut feeling that that book he has in his hand has really nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. I have a feeling that whoever wrote that book doesn't even have a rudimentary grasp of the grammar. That's a guess on my part, okay? That's a guess. But just by what he's reading, he certainly doesn't. I know that for sure. He certainly doesn't. And what he's conveying, what he's sharing from the book, also shows me that whoever the author of the book is doesn't have closure on the grammar either. Um, a statement not refuted or rebutted is considered to stand as fact. That's why I want to tell you guys, they have to get back to you when you mail these things out, line for line, thing for thing, and it has to be proven just. Like, here's the information to go against what you sent us. If they don't do that or they ignore it, smells, Wargo. I disagree with that. I'm a big fan of whatever works. I mean, if that works for them or him or whatever, cool. But I find that the psychology behind that is is weak to me. It's lacking. Um, just because someone doesn't engage in kuleana with you, does not answer back to you, does not mean that your claim stands as fact. Facts require certification and continuance of the evidence and on paper, or using correct sentence structure, they require positionals and lodials used in a correct sequencing mathematical interface. Uh, but just because someone doesn't answer back doesn't mean that what you wrote is a fact. It just means that your claim has standing. It stands there because no one is challenging it. Now in correct sentence structure, I don't, I personally don't use the, the attitude that I'm against anything. It has nothing to do with being against. It has everything to do with creating and maintaining a position of solidity with a foundation of grammar that 
they can come and if they want to challenge that position, confront that position, uh, but they're not going to be able to move it if, as he said, it's just. To use, in my mind, a, a better word, correct. So if they come and it's not what they're coming is not with correctness, then it's just going to dissipate and you're going to hold your position. But it has to be just. It cannot be malicious or underhanded or using subterfuge or, or anything like that. It definitely has to be peaceful, neutral, rule one, rule equal, and uh, have a balance of honor and grace. Um, then it is considered to be null and void. They have voided the contract. Whether they know it or not does not matter. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I definitely disagree with that. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So if you're driving down a road and there is no speed limit posted, and you're going, and it's a straight stretch, and it's 50, and you're going 50 miles an hour, and a cop pulls you over and says, it was 25. And you say, I didn't see any sign there that said 25. And they say, that's no excuse. No, it's not an excuse. What it is, is nascience. They're, to be punished for nascience is just malicious trespass. Now, the next time I drive through there, I now know, oh, this is construed as 25 miles per hour through here. I'm going to go 25 through there. Now I know. But if you don't know, for someone to take advantage of that is malicious. And it's a trespass. And it really shows their character. So if someone is thinking along these lines, that would be the same thing as giving someone a correct sentence structure contract that they don't understand and saying, well, too bad, so sad, you don't understand it. You know, this is the way it is. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. Okay. So they didn't abide by quantum syntax. They also didn't abide by uh, commercial law and the maximums of, of such. It also says, he who is unaware, allow him to be. I mean, you don't have to tell them. Okay. Um, but you need to stay in honor. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You don't need to tell them, but you need to stand in honor. So, in other words, I'm going to tell you that you have a second grade reading level and that you, you're you participating with a fictitious conveyance of grammar. But yet, I'm not going to tell you how or why. That's up to you. You have to go figure it out. No, that doesn't make any sense. That That is not honorable or graceful. Well, it's not a balance of honor and grace. It's being, in a sense, honorable, but it's not being graceful. I mean, there are religions that, that hold honor and, and no grace at all, like the, the religions that will murder, you know, the father will murder his own daughter because she gets pregnant out of wedlock that's standing in honor with their religion with no grace so honor without grace is hell so i definitely disagree with what he's saying okay so when somebody does send you something you respond back and you rebut it in the fiction you rebut it keep in mind this whole thing he's been talking about is using fiction against fiction. Um, the future is an illusion and the past is no longer exist. They aren't real on this true time game court. So they can't talk, they can't really phrase things in the past and they can't really, prior to this, you had done this, which was disarm, you know, whatever, no, no. Currently, this is where things are, are, are and so they have to speak in the present tense always. Um, Okay, so a couple examples would be like experience, interesting. You can't have these um, uh, the, the pretenses to these words that are negative. Exactly, interested. I think he means prefixes. And what he's talking about here is parse. I have not heard him 
mention one thing about correct sentence structure, nor one thing about syntax. Only parse. Discovery, um, the dis part of it makes it void. Needed, needed. Okay. Uh, the word to, even if these were to, 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 is just that note could, would, um, underhanded, also another negative word, nothing, because there's no in there, that's a negative, um, agreed, and two are also not a part of proper gram syntax grammar. Attached, the at, definitely, def, de, will, we will prosecute. They got the will in there. Guess what? Nope. Don't. Def. Just off the top of my head. I don't have any closure that def is no contract. You have D-E-A-F, but if you parse that word, which I'm going to do right now, I think you will find that it is one syllable, one particle. And the DE is not used as a prefix. Yeah. It's not. It's not two syllables. It's one syllable. Def is one syllable. So therefore, def is positive performance if you choose to use it. So do not. Nope. Can't use that either. Um, unreserved. Subordinate. Dishonor. Dishonest. Nope. Those are all not in proper format for the English language. So guys, that's about it for this video. Grab yourself this particular book if you want to learn more. Otherwise, that's it, your boy, the bad wolf, bringing you some of that ice. Say, so I say, yes, it's nice, <laughs> tastes good. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. No, no, but that was really the first time I. Ever okay, so my takeaway uh, in this reaction video is that this individual uh, does not possess or this individual does not show or demonstrate any knowledge of correct sentence structure communication partisan syntax grammar and the book he was reviewing or reading from from what he read does not demonstrate any type of uh, information about quantum grammar other than parse and uh, word particles now keep in mind, correct sentence structure is made up of three elements. Correct sentence structure communication, which is the way uh, you position your facts with correctness. For the cause of the concern is with the possessive of the concern with the possessive by an authority, period. The second part is the part that he talked about in the book talked about, which is par se which is the particles of a word and the prefixes and the suffixes and the vowel in front of a consonant and those types of no contract things, the past tense, future tense, the par se. And the third part is the syntax, which he did not talk about. He didn't talk about correct sentence structure or syntax at all. And the syntax would be, you know, banking parts of speech on words conjunctions, adverb, verbs, adjective, pronouns, position, lodial facts, past tense, future tense. Um, he didn't speak about any of that except for the past tense and future tense. And he didn't even identify them or credential them as part of a syntax key of any type. Now, in order to learn this grammar, you have to learn all three of those elements at the same time and at the same level. You don't want to have an unbalanced learning curve because if you're going to tell someone that they're using a fictitious conveyance of grammar then you yourself have to know and be able to teach someone what a correct conveyance of grammar is the hows and the whys 
That's my reaction to the wolf. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks. Thank you.